Here we are back in Tofino, British Columbia, ready to fish in the Race for the Blue Tuna Derby for our third year. The Race for the Blue Derby has grown tremendously since its inception three years ago. I think the first year there were 17 or 18 boats, but this year we're up to 36 boats competing for the top prize of $40,000. Me and the team can't wait to get out on the water. We got the team together, the band's back together. We got Billy the Governor McGinnis, we got Jeff, Jeff, Jeff Hale, and we got Kerry Cubby Tyconic. There's a lot of work and planning that goes into tuna fishing, so we're gonna have a team meeting on the boat to make sure we have everything in order for the days ahead. Okay, boys, game plan. I got a bunch of gear inside too, we can go through that. But um, food though, we gotta figure, so we went to the grocery store, got a bunch of stuff. I'm assuming you got stuff. I don't have anything. Nothing, okay. Been fishing, bud. Oh, I know. You just found out. You just found out about this trip two days ago. Oh yeah. Let me put my surprise face on. I got some quinoa. Okay. Well, that's good. We got some eggs, and we have. Yeah. Well, tenderloin. We got the tenderloin. Yeah. We're gonna need some sort of bread vessel for these things. I'll need to. I'll get some potatoes. I might need some one panner. Lettuce. Lettuce wraps. Lettuce wraps. We have um, English muffins and Lettuce we have wraps. bagels for the egg sandwiches. I brought some uh, elk um, maple breakfast sausage. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah, nice touch. Nice. Um, breakfast is good. Yeah, lunch, we're lunch we're okay, kind of. We got that tenderloin. Let's go right. by my place and we'll look at what we got for food and I'll make a final list of what I need to get and I'll hit the store before nine because I got to get this organized tonight. We're we'll picking you guys up at ten after five then. Okay. Makes sense to grab you on the way in. <laughs> so what are we doing? We're leaving we're here, here at 5.30. Well, we're leaving the dock at 6, so we're on the boat at 5.30. Right. Okay. Nice, yeah. nice slow cruise out tomorrow, right? And then we'll be there ready to attack when it's... Does that work for you guys? Yeah. I mean, you guys have for, for been sure. putting the time in, so I know it's exhausting. <laughs> You can sleep in the cutty in the morning. It'll be glass. It'll be glass. <laughs> I think we've always ran between six to eight rods, right? We've got these outriggers, our two uh, kind of medium lines out the side here, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can figure out what to do out of the downriggers, right? Either run rods out of there and then two out of the back. So we can run four at each side. Yeah. Because so, I think last year we ran six, seven at times. We can run eight, right? Yeah. we got the room to do it. Yeah, we'll run the boats out. Boats. Boat, we got the boats that'll spread on the furthest outrigger right, the line. The lines, yeah. And then we've got uh, splashers that we can do in the middle. Yeah. And then we can do uh, the dive boards or whatever. Yeah. And then a couple off the downrigger or whatever. We got those Shimano Talicas, 12, mm -hmm. 16s, and the, uh, the Speedmaster, 12 and 16s. We'll be dialed. It'll be nice to. It's been a while since I heard it's that. Good. How long do we... is it going to take us to get out? Weather contingent. Yeah. Almost four hours today, bud. Well, four hours? <laughs> <laughs> well, it should, it should take us two and two and a half. It's yeah. going to take us three hours tomorrow. Yeah. I think with the weather. You just got to take your time. Yeah. Cruise. Yeah. Fish weather shows it as uh, the swell dropping off actually tomorrow. I know. I know. Well, and the wind fast. dropping down. So that could be a good thing. It's good. Well, it looks nice in here. Hopefully it settles down and it'll be a fun, fun couple days, boys. Yeah. yeah. After taking care of all our gear and making sure our leaders were tied and lures were ready to go, we made a decision on what was on the menu for tomorrow. And now it's time to get some rest. It's our first morning and everyone is super excited and ready to go. The plan today was to, to fish offshore anywhere from 55 to 70 miles. Before you head out offshore in the morning, one of the most important things with tuna fishing is to make sure you have enough ice. It's critical to cool the tuna meat as quickly as possible in order to keep it in the best shape you can. So we had to load up on ice before we headed out. Good boys. Nicely done. Okay, hey boys, Thanks, we're off, hey, right on time. All right, boys, yeah, right on time. here we go. 33. Um, T-minus two, two and a half hour to first bite. Big tuna. Let's go. Let's go. Big Who's tuna. Who's going to eat first, or the fish? So <laughs> Hopefully the fish. <laughs> I hope yeah, the fish. The fish. Yeah. Look at all the boats out here. There's quite a few guys out already. 
So what do you want to do? Uh, we'll start here. Yeah, I think like that's a good spot to go, and we'll cut across. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna be moving around at seven miles an hour. We're gonna cover some ground out there, so it'll give us a chance to get the barbecue set up. Just hit exit, and it'll stay on yeah. us. Zoom in, and then when we get offshore, we'll it'll go right on us there. Cursor, and yeah, we're yeah. holding. I love using that stuff. Oh, it's so slick, right? Yeah. It keeps you on a straight line. Like, even though you know where you're going, a lot of times, oh, yeah. just natural tendency is just to, to pull the Zig boat. Zigzagging all over out there. Yeah. All right, bud, we're in the game here. All right. Once you have your destination figured out, it's all about riding out there safely. And our Kingfisher boat has performed great for us in all kinds of water conditions. When you make your way offshore, some of the telltale signs of the right area you're in is one, is the blue water. Two, is uh, bird activity. If you see birds working water or just see birds kind of flying around, and you're in that blue water into a piece of water that's showing a temperature change, usually you're trying to hit about that 62 to 64 degree water temperature is ideal, then I think it's a pretty good time to drop the gear and, and see if the fish are around. Getting the first line in the water here, just got out to the ground. Temperature is about 61 degrees. Nice blue water, sunny day. We're just going to throw an assortment of gear at these fish here. Some, some zookers, some cedar plugs. We've got some attractors going, and basically we just got to drive over them now. We look for signs of life out here for birds. Looking for, uh, uh, ideally, maybe some jumping fish. But uh, they're around. We've got to find them. We need some cooperation. I got this a long ways out, Jeffrey. Look at that. That's good, that's good. Look at it. Yeah. You see it out there? That's fine. Perfect. Okay. We're using some Metallicas, Speedmasters, 12s and 16s. Awesome reels for this type of fishery. Can't wait to hear them singing today. So our long rods are going to be at the end of the downriggers. And as you move in your, into your spread, your lines are shorter. So just when you're turning, you're not crossing lines and that. Just, so that's kind of the concept here. So you can see that boat heading out, and then when we stop the line, you'll see it splashing here in a second. Obviously, where it's creating a wake back there, but we want that to go a little further back. Just trying, trying to create as big a spread and as wide a spread as possible, creating an attraction to these fish to come up to the surface and feed. And now that we've got all the lines out, we need a cowbell button. I think tradition is a little more cowbell. Get to purchase a new one this year. Nice. There we go. Hey, the dinner bell. Woo! Dinner bell. <laughs> the buffet's open. Fishy, fishy, it's fishy. Open. Fish, fish on! on. Here we go. Woo! Somebody needs to be on the wheel, Gubby. I got the wheel. OK, I'm just going to clear these lines and lay this here, so don't step on that, OK? Sounds good. You in it? Yeah, go under, go underneath, Jeffrey. Go under, Jeff. Yeah, but I'm on here, though. Right? Oh, yank it off. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Okay, it's off. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to crank it. Okay. Forward and stick around the other side. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to pull it straight. This was on the boat. I want to go through that spot again. Long line, eh? Long line. On the way, on the furthest out boat. Well, the water looks great. Yeah, nice and clear. Turning towards the fish here. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't know, right? You're yeah, fighting a bit know. of the boat, right? Fighting, but the, it, fighting the drag of the boat. But it is coming in fairly well, easy run. now. Did take a good run. Did a couple, a couple head bursts and took off. Nice fish. Ah, Keener, huh? Yeah. Nice fish. Good start. Good job, Jeff. Atta boy, we're on the board. Yeah. First fish. Good job, buddy. Ten minutes. Take us over that spot again and see if it produces. Okay. First fish of the day. Ah, it's a nice fish. Good, healthy fish. Not a derby winner, but hey, we found one. Where there's one, there's usually a couple. So we get back at her right away. A beautiful fish. Yeah. <laughs> Billy brings a lot of things to the table when he's on your team. Not only is he a lifelong Tophetian who's fished his entire life, 
He has a great personality, he's fun to be around, and he's a phenomenal chef. So when you have him on your boat, it's an incredible feeling when you see him crack that grill, set it up, and light it, because you know you're in for a treat. Look at this peanut butter and jelly. This is what Mo would have been eating right there. Peanut butter yeah, and jelly. This is what you could have. Yeah. This is what we have. Cold sandwich. You could have a cold sandwich or you could have beef tenderloin trimmings with bacon, eggs, and cheddar. And you could have the grill take it up the whole deck. <laughs> Perfect. Jeffrey's portion. Jeffrey's portion just got a lot smaller with that last comment he made. <laughs> so I just toss those back. Get out of the kitchen. Get out of the kitchen. Does we this get... stay here all day, Billy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll stay there until we cook Excellent. up beef tenderloin yeah, I can't wait. and potato salad. I can't wait till all these oh, rods go off. Enjoying, you're going to be enjoying <laughs> can't it. can't wait till all these rods go off. We got just a mess going in here. Hold on, just hold on, Tiger. Don't do anything. <laughs> just hold on to him. I wasn't the boat here. So I did That's a little splasher. Back us down a little. That's a good fish. Second fish here, picking away. Second fish in about a half hour. It's not like gangbusters, but that's that's all right. As long as we're finding the auto one, this could be a nice fish here, though. But look at the white cheddar going on top of this. Baked eggs here, potatoes, bacon, <laughs> beef wow. tenderloin. Look onions, at that thing. Garlic. It's just barking. You're clear, all your lines clear, Tiker. You're good, just... Right on, right on. He's heavy. Never one more. Don't move him on. Take a bite out of it. Do the Mike Tyson. I know. Tiker, how's that fish feel? It's been a year since you've done this. Hey, it's, uh, it looks like a heavy, heavy, heavy fish, man. You know what? Just, just, take, just take your time with it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this one's got weight to it. Yeah, that drag's cranked too. We haven't had one in two days that has pulled line and held out like this, so this, this is a good The one. rod's like, you can tell it's almost like the back, like right from the butt of the rod is. If it's a nice fish here, Tiger, he's probably gonna come to the boat and he's gonna sound down, like those bigger fish kind of do that, huh? Um, you want to grab this? I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I think well, you should grab it. You're the host. <laughs> grab the grab it. What do you want to do? Pull in? I just, you pull see that in. thing? I would yard it, but yeah. just watch how it's hooked. Let's see how it's hooked. If it's hooked, like lip hooked, we'll gaff it. Just gaff that thing. Hang in there, bud. Yeah, Come you're on. there, bud. You're almost there. Come on. Take your time. Yeah. What do you call this a marathon or a sprint? Gonna slow down a bit more, so you probably. Yeah, he's pushing back now. Is he? Oh, yeah. yeah. So this has the little rabbit on it, so we'll see the orange first. When it's close, yeah. Tiger, you might be one and done today, bud. Hey. <laughs> oh, Go for it now. <laughs> this kid. This is a good one, though. Yeah. Buddy, salt. <laughs> it's like a yellow fin. It's a blue fin. Could be a blue fin. Seventy-pound blue fin. Oh, here's orange. Oh, that's a nice fish. I'm gonna pull him in, I think. Do you want to gaff him when he gets here or no? He's a nice fish. Hey? Do you want to gaff him, Justin? Just pull him. Pull him? Yeah! Oh, Tiker! Wow! Yes, buddy! Nice dude. Nice job, boys. Dude, that's pushing Tai. Hey? Sweet, sweet. That is. That's not fit when it came out of the water. Billy. Billy, this guy can work out with you. Yeah, buddy. That's a beautiful fish. Look at. That's a proper one. That's a proper one. They're out here. There's nothing to see over here. <laughs> Three more of those boys and it's over. It's over. Hold on. Good coaching, boys. Good coaching. Ready, Jeff? Right. You know what that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Breakfast time. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yo, we need the money. 
<laughs> Look at hey, that wife. fish. Yeah, Look at how pretty this beauty. thing is. That is beautiful. Oh, my wife's going right. to be happy when she sees this. <laughs> Let's get she likes big loins. Yeah, big here. loins. Okay, the final product there. Look at that there. Well done, buddy. Now you earned yourself hey. breakfast. Thank you. Absolutely. It. Appreciate it. My mouth's watering. My ass watering. Oh. Cubby. Yeah. Hey. First class. Nothing wrong with that, Amos. I, I don't know. I don't know where you can get a better meal, on or off the water. Exactly. Nice job, pal. Perfect. Let's do it. Oh. Appreciate it, Billy. Yeah. Filet mignon, filet mignon. Duck fat, potatoes, cheese, oh. onions, caramelized onions. Garlic. Shut your mouth. Oh. For anybody who's never tuna fished, I highly recommend, if you have an opportunity to do it, to get out and try it, because it, it will actually blow your mind. The adrenaline, the excitement that you experience when you get into these fish is, is really second to none. Albacore tuna hit violently hard and then go on massive runs. There's really nothing you can do to stop these fish. You're trolling at a pretty quick speed, you know, roughly seven miles per hour. So when you do get a strike, it is loud on the boat. Like it is like a loud thump and then immediately, your reel just starts screaming. You know, sometimes you get into them right away and, and you drop in and all of a sudden it's mayhem. But there's other times when you got to work, you got to put the time in. And if, if you do that, you usually get rewarded. Three, two, three, let's go. Three, where's three? There we go. Billy, mark that, mark that. Excitement. Take her here. You gotta come over here. Just give me a rod. Nice. Throw her right back in there, brother. Oh, this one's better. Better one? Oh, thanks for giving me the bigger one. Yeah, bud. That's what you do. You reel in big fish. I seen it. A little lull, and now we're back into it. Triple header. Look at this thing. What's he doing now? What's he doing now? Do you want a gaff or what? Or he's sound in here. I got a nice fish. Eh? Nah, he's not bad. Nice job. Good job, boys. Good job. Woo! All three, all three in the boat. All three in the boat. Well done. I just had uh, first triple header of the day. Some excitement on the boat here. All on the short rods, nice and tight to the boat, so that was fun. We'll get this guy taken care of here. We'll get him on ice and take care of your meat, man. It's so important to have these fish taken care of properly. Woo-hoo-hoo! Oh, yeah, baby. Yeah. Finding a few more fish now. Oh, just bucking. I think it's bigger than you think. Well, he's kind of sulking down there, yeah, eh? Kind of, he grabbed it real tight and tried to take his run. There's color, I see color. <laughs> you know how clear that water is, eh? No. Oh, yeah. Yellowtail. Uh, yeah. Yellowtail. Yellow Billy, in, in by that log. Nice yellowtail, dude. Oh, that's beauty. Beautiful yellowtail. Look at that. Nice. Oh, a little sashimi, boys. There we go. Oh, yeah. In tight by that log, eh? Okay, so we found a, a big log out here floating and. We circled back in and got a beautiful yellowtail right off the edge of that log. So we're gonna go by here one more time. I mean, these fish aren't super common out here, but uh, they're starting to be a little bit more regular being caught, I guess, and uh, a great eating fish. Like, phenomenal, phenomenal sashimi right here. So we'll get that guy on ice, take care of him so we can enjoy him later. What a beautiful looking fish. Well, we had another phenomenal time at the Race for the Blue Tuna Derby hosted by Tofino Resort Marina. It was so much fun to see old friends, meet new friends, 
and just to see the passion that this group of anglers has for this type of fishery which really comes down to adventure and uh, experiencing something new. The crew on the boat, such good guys to fish with. Again, all super passionate guys, but the main thing is just going out and, and enjoying yourself and, and having a good time and doing it safely. And another derby under our belt. Unfortunately, we didn't take home the first place prize this year, but the race for the blue event keeps getting better every year and it's just growing every year. But all that's left this year is for us to go enjoy a nice meal at 1909 Kitchen and make a plan for what we're gonna do next year.